Hello everyone. So in my last session we had discussed few questions from unit 12 and I had also mentioned that this is not so important unit from examination point of view but yes you can pick up some topics from where the questions are expected. So continuing with the same uh, I have taken some more questions from different topics. Let's have a look on to that. So you can also get some kind of logical or experimental questions as well. A pharmacy student designed a drug to specifically target the receptors for retinoic acid in order to prevent stem cell differentiation. After in vitro trial, the investigator found that the cells underwent differentiation and the drug seemed to be ineffective. The following reasons were given by the student. The size of the drug exceeded the size of the molecules that could cross the membrane. The drug was small in size but hydrophobic in nature. The drug did not bind to its receptor. Now this is a kind of question for which you don't require any uh, specific bookish knowledge or as such. If you read up the questions from that question itself, you will you can extract the answer. So here you have to find out the probable reason for drug ineffectiveness. So the correct answer over here is statement 1 and 3. Of course, the size of the drug might have exceeded the size of the molecules that could cross the membrane. And this has happened because your drug did not bind to its receptor properly. So these two statements are quite related to each other. So based on an understanding, a basic understanding, one can easily click on to the answer. Okay. Next, let's have a look into another question. Gene therapy is a promising tool for addressing several diseases in humans. With respect to the above, which one of the following statement is false? Gene therapy involves the direct genetic modification of the cells or model to achieve a therapeutical goal. Current gene therapy is directed at modifying somatic cells. The only successful gene therapies are those in which cells are removed from a patient genetically modified and reintroduced into the patients. Recessively, inherited disorders are good targets for gene therapy. Now, have an attention to what the question they are asking. Here, they are not asking you about the correct statement. Here, they are asking about the incorrect statement. So, the incorrect statement over here is, the only successful gene therapies are those in which cells are removed from a patient, genetically modified and reintroduced into the patient. So, what is gene therapy? Gene therapy is all about replacing a damaged gene with a healthy one. So, basically used for curing diseases. So, if you see, we have two types of gene therapy based upon the type of cells. Somatic cell gene therapy, germline gene therapy. Somatic cell gene therapy, as the name indicates, therapeutic genes will be transferred into the somatic cells. And in germline gene therapy, the therapeutic genes will be transferred to the germ cells. Somatic cells examples include bone marrow cells, blood cells, skin cells, etc. And germline gene therapy, the germ cells, of course, we have only two, that is eggs and sperms. Since it is a somatic cell gene therapy, it won't be inherited to later generations. Since the therapeutic genes are transferred to the gametic cells, yes, they are heritable and passed on to later generations. At present, all the researchers are directed to correct the defects in somatic cells. For safety, ethical and technical reasons, yes, germline gene therapy is being attempted at present. So, these are the two types of gene therapy based upon the 
type of cells into which the therapeutic genes are transferred. Next, we have approaches in gene therapy. So, we have two approaches. One, we call it as a direct gene delivery that is known as in vivo gene therapy. And the other one is ex vivo gene therapy which is otherwise known as cell based gene delivery. So, in in vivo gene therapy or direct gene delivery as the name indicates, the therapeutic genes are directly delivered to the target organ. So, the therapeutic gene will require a vehicle such as an adenovirus that will carry the vector, I mean the therapeutic gene and transfer to the target organ. So, cell based gene therapy means what? In this case, your therapeutic gene no doubt will be carried by a harmless vector that is retrovirus or a lentivirus, but at the same time, in this case, stem cells will be extracted from the person and extracted, expanded in the lab. So, these therapeutic genes and stem cells will be grown together. And after the manipulation or after the growth, they will be reintroduced into the person. So, in vivo, we are directly delivering the gene into the organ, target organ. In ex vivo, we are extracting the stem cells, growing them in the lab, combining with the therapeutic gene and reintroduced into the person. So, these are the two different approaches of gene therapy. So, gene therapy is again one topic from where uh, not always but yes, on a rotational basis the questions are being asked and so far they had asked very direct and simple questions only. So, have a basic idea about the approaches, types and the types of vectors, their advantages, disadvantages that will be more than enough for this topic. Next. Following genes have been genetically engineered to develop herbicide resistance in plants. Resistance to glyphosate using 5-enol pyroville shikimate 3-phosphate synthase gene. Bilaphos resistance using the bar gene. Sulfonyl urea resistance using the acetolactate synthase gene. Atrazine resistance using the glutathione S-transferase gene. So, in which of the above two cases, the mechanism is based upon the abolition of herbicide binding to the enzyme? So, what is the correct answer over here? It is statement A and C. That means your EPSPS and the sulfonyl urea resistance. These are the two correct statements. Now, in order to get answer for this kind of questions, you need to be clear with this table. The selectable marker genes can be brought that are commonly used for gene transfer experiments are broadly categorized into antibiotic resistance genes, anti-metabolite markers, herbicide resistance gene. So here abbreviation is also given. The source of gene from where that uh, gene has been extracted and what is the substrate that is being used for selection. Everything is given. For example, Neomycin phosphotransferase 2, that is NP2, NPT2, obtained from E. coli and the substrate that was used for selection was canamycin and genticin. Similarly, NPT3, obtained from Streptococcus faecalis, the same substrate. Hygromycin phosphotransferase, that is another important uh, gene, HPT, obtained from E. coli, Substrate used will be hygromycin only. Similarly, take the category of anti-metabolite markers, DHFR, dihydrofolate reductase. Taken from mouse, methotrexate will be the substrate. This is the EPSPS, enol pyruvyl shikimate phosphate synthase. Then we have acetolactase synthase, glyphosate oxidoreductase, bromoxynil nitrilase. All these comes under herbicide resistance. So if you remember this table, it will be easy for you to get an answer from that uh, questions uh, based on selectable markers. Then apart from that, you also expect questions uh, in unit 12, you can also expect Match the following questions specifically regarding the 
ecosystem that is the uh, natural uh, biosphere reserves, wildlife sanctuaries, tiger reserves and all. Again, that is the part of unit 9. So, from either of this part, you can take up uh, for preparation because basically they are tables to be remembered. Okay. So, that's it from unit 12 from my side. And uh, uh, I hope so you have understood which topics you should focus on while preparing for the CSI net exam and how the questions are coming. So, see you again in another session. Thank you so much.